Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. On the agenda tonight, we're going to be looking at Bach's Cello Suite Number no. 1 in D and this is going to be played by John Feely and we're going to be starting right at the beginning with Prelude so let's get John up on screen and see how he gets on. jump in here just to break down what we've seen so far or at least explain a few things because there's so much impressive technique going on here with John but not only that the way that he uses the technique to put the emotion and the feel into what he's playing he's very aptly named John Feely and interestingly John's using the classical side to side vibrato to get these notes to sing but he also uses rock blues vibrato or traditional vibrato as some people call it where he bends the string to change the pitch to then give that vibrato effect. So he's really just combining those two techniques for whatever sound he actually wants to get. And this is always the point of playing. In terms of the top players, they always play for the point of the final expression. It doesn't matter how you get to that expression, as long as you can get there, that's the most important thing. Just while I'm talking about technique and expression, believe it or not, there's over 300 dislikes on this video, which is just crazy. But it just brings up an interesting point, especially, unfortunately, with the little exposure I've had to the classical community. Some people, I saw a video of another player playing a great classical piece and people commented underneath saying that the technique in this is poor because you can see the thumb behind the neck, on top of the neck. And it wasn't on top of the neck like you see with electric guitar over the top. You could just see the tip of that thumb. And of course, that's dependent on camera angle as well. But the whole point for me is missed when people comment about seeing the thumb behind the neck because they're not listening to it. The whole point is to get an accurate representation of the piece that has been composed, regardless of how you get there. I know that a lot of people in classical music get hung up with how it should look while you're playing it, but as long as you get the sound, I don't really see the problem with it. It's not as if you ever listen to a classical piece that might be played on guitar, and then you hear it and you go, oh, that note there, I could see his thumb. It never happens, it's impossible. You can't hear someone's thumb visually. So it's just absolutely crazy when I see these people downvoting videos for technique purposes that are absolutely nothing to do with how the piece comes across in the end. It sounds great, it sounds accurate, it's full of emotion exactly here. With John, even with John, you could say, oh, I saw his thumb there. It doesn't matter. It's how you get across the piece as it was written. If you can get it exactly as it was written, that's the whole point. 
point. It's just absolutely crazy to me, but I come from a different background of classical music. So for me, it's all about expression. Doesn't matter how you get there. There's so many players that are even missing a finger or they're actually missing a hand and they play with their feet. So many people have adapted the way that they've played in order to express themselves through music, through the guitar. But back to John's playing, he's so expressive, but so accurate on this fretboard. You've got to be in order to get this down because this is a cello piece. It's written for cello. So he's actually adapting this to play it on his classical guitar. But the right hand, we actually get a close up so we can see his nails. Sometimes you get classical players who really grow out their nails, whereas John has actually got them pretty short. The third finger is a little bit longer than the first finger and second finger. But the way that John's playing this, you can hear the subtle difference between that change in dynamic between using the skin of the finger and then just using that tiny bit of nail that he's got out there. So now he's got total control of that dynamic if he wants that aggressive almost pick sound of using that nail. He's got that, but then if he wants to then take it down in dynamics, obviously in classical music, dynamics is so important, but he's got that option. He can absolutely take it wherever he wants. And then as you can see with the thumb, he's grown that nail out as well. But again, he's got that option. If you watch closely, you'll see John's thumb, the fact that he moves it, rotates it ever so slightly more perpendicular to the guitar or more at a right angle to the string in order to get a little bit more of that nail sound. Like I said, it's gonna make it sound a little bit more aggressive like you would have with a pick if you're playing electric guitar or acoustic guitar with a pick. So there's a just an ever so slight, really subtle change in angle in order to get that. Let's get back into the performance. I just want to do a quick shout out for the team that have actually mic'd up this guitar because it is such a great sound we're getting here. Sometimes when you watch classical performances, you don't necessarily get a great sound because it's so difficult to get a good mic setup with that acoustic guitar, but also classical guitar like we're seeing here. So just a shout out for those, those techs, those music guys that have mic'd up this guitar because it is so nicely done. And back to John's playing, we could see at the end there with the chord shapes applying that side to side vibrato in order to get those chords to sing rather than the single notes that we had earlier. And we've spoken about the right hand, but also John's left hand, the finger independence that he's got going on, the amount of repetition and muscle memory that's required in order to be this accurate and move at this speed. There are pieces later on where it will just blow your mind the speed at which John gets into position and absolutely nails everything. We don't get any buzzing here and there's nowhere to hide on classical guitar. You make any mistake, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb and John is just all over it all the time. And while we're focusing on that left hand, we actually get a real close up so we can see his left hand in terms of how he's fretting the notes, but also his nails on the left hand is something that I've never mentioned before. I don't think I've ever had a real close up of a player's left hand, but the left hand nails are so important to keep them short, to make sure that when you are fretting notes, they're not going to be catching previous strings. They're not going to be catching strings as you're leaving your fretted notes. So one of those overlooked things that nobody really mentions about the importance of having short nails on your fretting hand, on your left hand, because long nails, even if you just let them go for a day or a couple of days too long, you will have all kinds of problems. Of course, when you're pushing down onto the fretboard, the first thing that you want to make contact with the fretboard is the skin of your finger, not a nail, because a nail will then stop you from being able to push any harder. It's going to be a physical barrier. So make sure you keep those nails nice and short, nice and neat on that left hand in order to keep all your fretting really nice and clean. The classical guitar, when it's played well, is such an expressive instrument because you've got that dynamic range of not only the standard steel strings that you'd get, but those three nylon strings. So you get that contrast in the dynamic just in the makeup of the guitar itself 
When it's in the hands of an expert like John, like I mentioned with that right hand, he's got a whole range of dynamics he can put in with every single pick, just depending on how he picks it with the right hand. And then when you add into all that the left hand as well, the stylistic options that he's got with that vibrato, with slides and all the other techniques that you know if you're guitar players. And this is the thing with the top players and not only top classical players, I'm talking about players in general and not even on guitar, on all instruments. They've got this affinity with the instrument that means they can express and emote through that instrument so that when you're listening to them play, you're listening to the art of the music. You're hearing that composition. You're not confused or distracted by any technique that's being played that might be substandard when a slide goes wrong or the bend doesn't quite happen or you get a note ring out that shouldn't. You never hear that. You can only judge what you're hearing in terms of its art and the music that you're hearing. So these top players, as I said, it goes across the board, all music in, in general. It's a wild generalization, but you'll find no matter what you're watching, if that player is a top player at that instrument, you can hear the art. And if somebody is not very good at an instrument, you can't hear any art. There's no expression. There's no emotion. No one's ever going to watch someone who's a beginner and start bursting into tears because they're so touched emotionally by the performance. All you see is the techniques. Whereas the better somebody gets, when you get to the real elite level, those techniques disappear. You can't even notice them. And sometimes, even as a guitar teacher myself and other players will tell you that when somebody's that good, you hear the art and then you have to do a double take and think, oh, hang on, let's try and find the techniques that are going on because you're just analyzing the music in general. And that's what the great players do. I'm going to put the link to this in the description below so you guys can check out all of the pieces if you want to, because this is just under 20 minutes long. So it's definitely worth a watch because there's some super impressive stuff here with John. Like I mentioned, the way that he moves around that fretboard so accurately and so quickly. Some of the pieces are really demanding here so check it out if you get a chance but thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you guys at the next one <laughs>